Good morning, my Real News Media TV family. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning, and I'm wishing for everyone a wonderful and a productive day. And in the news this morning for December 12, 2023, alleged gunman shot dead while attempting to rob Beryllium. One of several gunmen who allegedly attempted to rob a Beryllium team near Mandeville on Monday night was shot dead. A firearm was also reportedly seized following the incident. Preliminary reports indicate that a group of gunmen attacked the security team at a distribution center in Grey Ground shortly before 7 p.m. During a reported shootout, one of the gunmen was shot and killed. His accomplices managed to escape. There is now a heavy security presence at the facility. In August, a beryllium team was attacked in the vicinity of Scotiabank on Ward Avenue in Mandeville. Five persons were found with gunshot wounds and were taken to hospital to undergo treatment during that incident. A 25-year-old man has been slapped with several charges related to the incident. Phone recordings and the cop's second statement feature in Beachy Stout murder trial. After a month-long voir dire, the murder trial of Everton Beachy Stout MacDonald and his co-accused Oscar Barnes resumed in the presence of a seven-member jury on Monday in the Home Circuit Court in Kingston with a detective constable outlining steps he took to secure a cell phone which allegedly contained call recordings but which he failed to mention in his first statement. The cop admitted in court to having recorded a second statement in 2023, three years after his first statement, in which he mentioned the phone. The voir dire, a trial within a trial, was conducted to determine whether the call recordings should be admitted as evidence in the matter without the presence of the jury. It was ruled that the recordings would be accepted despite requests from the defense attorneys representing Beachy Stout to have them thrown out. The call recordings are said to be of 120 conversations between Beachy Stout and the Denvalin Bobla Manot. Manot is currently serving a 19-year and a 10-month prison sentence for being the contractor in the murder of Beachy Stout's second wife, Tonya MacDonald. Manot confessed to his role in the July 20, 2020 murder and agreed to become crown witness and give evidence against the Beachy Stout and the Barnes. According to Manot, Beachy Stout promised him $3 million if he could stab Tonya to death, but because he couldn't do it, he subcontracted the job to Barnes, who he claimed he first met on a fishing beach in Manchanil, Portland one day. Following the murder after field attempts to collect money from Beachy Stout, Manot claimed that he secretly recorded about 120 phone calls he allegedly had with a Portland businessman. The detective constable who had arrested Manot in 2020 told the court on Monday that he confiscated a cell phone from Manot when he arrested him at his home in Ranch Hill, Portland. He also told the court that he confiscated payment slips belonging to Manot's son, which had the name Mary Shine Enterprise printed on them. Along with the phone and the receipt, the detective constable said he also took away a pair of clerk's shoes from Manot's home because it appeared to have blood splattered on it. However, in court on Monday, the detective constable said that he made no reference to the phone in his initial recorded statement on September 16, 2020. The first time he made mention of a phone in any statement was in September 2023, when the trial had already started. That prompted attorney Courtney Rowe, a member of Beachy South's defense team, to ask during cross-examination if the policeman knew what cooking up a case meant. Laughing at the question, the policeman then asked Roe what he meant when he said cooking up a case. Roe did not expound. The detective said he wrote the second statement after being instructed by the lead investigator from the Major Investigations Division to do so. On arrival at Binster Minot's house on August 3, 2020, I told him that I had a warrant to search his house under the Firearms Act. He complied and agreed to the search. He had a mobile phone in his possession, and I took the phone. He had it in his hand. I placed the phone in front of my ballistic vest. It was a Samsung Galaxy A31. The search eventually concluded, and nothing more of interest was found. I handed over Mr. Minot and the items to the lead detective. The model number I gave you just now came from the back of the phone. I had made a note of it on August 3, 2020 in my notebook. 
I wrote two statements in regard to this matter. The first one was in September 2020. I had to write the second statement because I did not mention the model number of the phone in the first statement. The lead investigator pointed it out to me, so I wrote the second statement. I handed over the phone sometime around the midday on August 3, 2020, and I did not have anything further to do in relation to this matter, the detective constable testified. During Rose Cross examination, the cop testified that he learned in October 2023 that he would be required to give evidence in the case and that he gave his second statement on September 21, 2023, just the days after the start of the murder trial on September 18, 2023. I gave my first statement on September 16, 2020. It was typed on one and a half legal size paper. The time I wrote that statement was closer to the time of the search. Nowhere in the statement did I mention taking a phone from Bobla. Nowhere did I mention anything about a model number. The first time I mentioned the phone was after I was told to come and to give evidence. Nowhere in my first statement did I say I handed over a phone to the lead detective. It wasn't important to record in the first statement that I handed over a phone. The only thing I mentioned in the statement was the pay slips I found at the house. I didn't see anything significant about the phone. I did not even record it in the station diary, and I did not make an entry in the movement diary, the detective constable said. The murder trial has seen seven witnesses take the stand so far. On Monday, a detective corporal also gave evidence in the case. He was one of the policemen who arrested the co the Barnes, and played a major role in the investigation. He told the court that in June 2021, he was briefed by one of his superiors and instructed that he was to collect a package from the Cyber Forensics Crime Division. The package contained the sensitive evidence related to the matter. When I collected the package, I made notes in my notebook as to what I collected. It was a digital forensic report as well as a compact disc. It was two CDs. The package had a revenue number which I recorded in my notebook for the year 2021. I don't have the book with me. It is at my office, the detective corporal said, indicating that the book is readily available, but that he just didn't have it in his possession. Judge Chester Stamp adjourned the matter until this morning, when the cop is expected to bring the notebook to court. Cayman Police Confirmed Death of Jamaican Man The Cayman Police have confirmed that the remains recovered in the mangroves in East End last month are those of a Jamaican man. The deceased is 26-year-old Adrian Williamson, who was reported missing July last year. The cause of death has not been released. Mr. Williamson was residing in Georgetown at the time of his disappearance. His remains were found in a secluded section of the mangroves on November 30. Mixed the reactions as the traffic changes in Mandeville take effect. There were mixed reactions as the long-awaited traffic changes designed to ease a congestion in and around the Mandeville Town Centre in Manchester took effect on Monday morning. One of the major changes is the conversion of Caledonia Road from a two-way to a one-way corridor. Motorists have been rerouted and are required to travel north along the thoroughfare and past the Mandeville Regional Hospital. This has raised the concerns regarding the time it will take to get to the hospital during emergencies. The changes have also created a bottleneck heading into the Mandeville Town Centre, causing a miles-long traffic jam. Some motorists say the changes are not feasible, but the Council for the Mandeville Division, Jones Oliphant, says that the Municipal Corporation will continue working with the National Works Agency to improve her signage. He is urging road users to exercise the patience. I know it's challenging to people because it's new and anything that's new, you know, always put on a challenge. One of the greatest challenges that I've heard since morning is people coming from New Green Road cannot access the hospital by a right turn here. We know that is a concern, but what we will do is make sure that signages are put in place and notices are put in place that the motor in public and the public on a whole can be aware of what is taking place. What I'm encouraging our motorists to do is to plan your route as much as possible so that you, you can have a smooth ride wherever you go. There are more vehicles on the roadway using the same road space over a number of years. So there have to be some changes. And 
this is one of the children that's come about, and I'm certain that this train will assist the traffic flow. You know that pedestrians are included in the traffic. We have to make space for them also. You see that this sign there is blocking the green, the green light, so a lot of persons don't even know that it changed. It should be a, it should have a traffic police around here to direct them to show them what to do for give them a week rundown so they can understand because it's not everybody know that the light changed. We really need a traffic police around here to show them the first week what to do so they can understand. Some people still coming up on the one way, same way. Everybody, they don't understand. They just don't understand. Not opposing to the change, but I doubt they were ready for this change. First and foremost, it's a school zone and there are no signs saying approaching school or slow. And what I've observed this morning is that most of the motorists are speeding so I think the powers that be need to erect a school sign or slow school sign in the area with, with, with enough time and the proper signs erected, it, it should work.